Africa's highest peak, Mount Kilimanjaro, is situated in the northeast of Tanzania. The country is home to a number of areas of outstanding natural beauty. Along with Kilimanjaro, there's also Tanzania's famous national parks, Serengeti, Arusha and Lake Manyara. They boast some of the richest ecosystems on the planet. Yet for all its natural beauty, Tanzania remains one of the poorest countries in the world. The majority of the East African nation's 55 million inhabitants live a subsistence lifestyle in rural areas. Around a quarter of the population live in towns and cities, the largest of these being Dar es Salaam. The country gained independence from the United Kingdom in 1961. Over the years, Tanzania has managed to avoid the serious internal conflicts that have plagued a number of other African nations. The country's first and longest serving president was Julius Nyerere. He was affectionately known as Mwalimu, or teacher. One of Africa's most respected figures, he led the country up until 1985. During his life, Nyerere had loved to play Bao, a traditional board game played in many parts of Tanzania, as well as in neighboring countries along the East African coast. It's because Mwalimu and other leaders enjoyed this game so much that we're doing everything we can to promote Bao. We want people to like Bao as much as football. This game has been around for a very long time. It's been passed down from our forefathers. Many regions have their own version of the game. The one that we are playing is known as Swahili Bao, and that's the version that most people speak in Tanzania. Whilst in office, Julius Nyerere set up the Ministry of National Culture and Youth. The aim was to help foster a sense of national identity after years of colonial rule. And as a consequence, traditional games such as Bao began to thrive. The rules of Bao are very intricate, but in essence, the winner is the person who manages to capture the counters from their opponent and place them in their square-shaped store on the board. Kasim Asamam Chumboy is General Secretary of the Tanzania Bao Association. Bao players are not allowed to drink or be drunk during games. They're not allowed to cheat or get help from someone else. Either. During competitions, your opponent can't be a neighbor because your neighbor knows your weaknesses in bow better than you know anyone else. In matches, you have one minute to think, and then you have another minute to make it. Your A successful bow player must have good powers of concentration and be able to anticipate their opponent's moves. Bow is a great mind sport. You have to use your head all the time because it's a very mathematical game. So, for anyone who can't add up, it's hard to play and win at bow. But, on the whole, it's not a very difficult game. You just need to be able to do the calculations. You can teach anyone how to play Bao in a day. Performance-enhancing drugs are, of course, banned in the Bao world. But saying that, players here do get through copious amounts of coffee during matches. The coffee that we drink gets into our bloodstream and gives us more energy. I made you laugh, so you know what I mean. Although the game is still primarily a social pastime, there are bow clubs all over the country and national competitions are staged regularly. And it's fair to say that this game stirs up quite a lot of passion in Tanzania. I guess it's a bit like football in Europe. There's a lot of rivalry between teams there, and it's more or less the same here with Bao. 
There are some big rivals in Bao, and people have their favourite teams, and players who they like to follow. And of course, everyone wants to win. As with so many traditional sports and games all over the world, Bao serves an important social purpose. It gives people the chance to get together, engage in friendly banter, discuss daily topics, and, if only for a moment, forget all their troubles.